What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Twinmotion video for you. So as many of you might have seen, Twinmotion 2020 was released earlier this week. So I wanted to make a video talking through what's changed, what some of the new features are, and kind of what we can expect moving forward. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first of all, I'm going to link to the official release trailer on Twinmotion's website over here on, um, on YouTube. And so they made a great video kind of walking through some of the changes and I also wanted to show you some inside of twin motion itself but um, I wanted to kind of walk through some of the changes and then we can talk a little bit about the new costs and what all that means and things like that so first things first as we go through this I'm gonna kind of click on this play button but as we go through this video there's a bunch of different things that are new first the volumetric lighting so they've added or improved the atmospheric lighting effects like fog and smoke inside of the new version. So I'm excited to start playing around with this. I may even want to do kind of an example scene like this one because um, this really demonstrates what those features do. So they've also improved the global illumination contained inside of Twinmotion. So you can see how you get natural looking indirect lighting in here with this upgrade. Um, they've also They've also improved the atmosphere settings, so you can see how the sky and atmosphere rendering in here have been improved as well. So they've also really improved the depth of field tool, so you can see how now you can kind of affect um, a lot better the way that the um, camera focuses on things in the foreground or the background. So you can see how they've really improved this depth of field tool, um, but basically this, this is a much better tool for focusing on certain areas while having kind of this blur effect in other areas so it simulates this a lot better so they've also improved the light sources inside of twin motion so they've got these new area lights in here that I haven't played around with yet but I'm really excited to kind of mess around with those so the emissive material has also been improved so those uh, those materials now emit real lights so and these are all great example models that twin motion has inside of their uh, inside of their video and we may do some example models based on these just to kind of look at some of these new features so they also have a standalone viewer now that you can use in order to view these. You can actually export these and you can see at the bottom you can actually export this as kind of a walkthrough but then you can click on these different images and it'll take you to those areas. So it's a really great viewer for your renderings that you can use um, in order to show your models to people that don't necessarily have Twinmotion installed on their computer. So the x-ray materials allow you to see through things. It's really good for visualizing your MEP systems where your mechanical and electrical go. In addition, they've also added some notes in here um, that you can use in order to uh, basically mark up your, your 3D rendering so you can add text in here. Um, so, and you can also export those back to your BIM function or your BIM program. And so really what I want to do now is I want to talk a little bit about the vegetation features. These are probably the things I'm most excited about. And so they've added all of these new trees, for example. Well, notice when you mouse over them, um, the trees basically now have growth. Um, they have like a growth lifespan in them. So for example, if I was to drag this sweet birch tree in here and I was to take a look at it, and um, by the way, these are improved 3D models in here so they look a lot better when you get close to them, but one of the things they've included now is the ability to adjust the age of both a single tree as well as a whole forest of trees. So you can see how I could drag this tree in here, or we'll take a look in a minute about changing a whole forest's worth. But you can see how now you can adjust the age, which adjusts the heights, and then they also have built in different seasons as well. But if we were to take a closer look at these, um, they're really high detailed. And one of the things that this does that I really like about this new version is as I zoom out, you're gonna notice that the detail gets less inside of your viewport. So what this does is this renders this stuff um, to a higher level of detail the closer you get to keep this from really heating up your computer. So I remember in the last version, if I was to zoom into trees like this, um, or if I was to add a bunch of trees like this, then it would run kind of slowly. Right now I do not hear my computer spinning up in the same way that it would before. So really excited about these new trees as well as what you can do with them. 
So in addition, they've also added a tool that allows you to scatter this vegetation based on a surface. So let's go ahead and get rid of these trees. And what I want to do instead is if you go down, you can see how they've changed this to be a context section. So they've changed what was in here. It used to say nature, now it says context. So what they've added is they've added this new vegetation scatter tool. What the vegetation scatter tool does is it allows you to select a kind of vegetation. So for example, if we were to go back to our trees, you can drag a couple different trees in here. So maybe like the birch and the pecan tree, maybe this gray birch as well. But then you can select them and you can also select a surface. So in this case, we'll use our grass surface right here. You can just click on the button for scatter add and then click on your surface. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add these trees in here based on that surface. And there's a few things I need to clean up about my SketchUp model over here um, because it's adding it based on that surface and you can see how it's kind of intersecting with my, uh, with my house. So I don't necessarily want that, but you can see how this can quickly add trees to your surface to let you create forests and other things like that. So I'm really excited about this new feature Part of the reason I'm excited about this new feature is because it also allows you to add grass. But one of the features I've been really waiting for is the ability to add like grass to faces. Well now, you could drag a grass material in here, click on this, you can see you can add grass to this face. And part of my problem here is this isn't separated properly in my SketchUp model, but we've been waiting for the ability to add this kind of grass um, to a face like this for a long time, because it's a lot faster than coming in here with the landscape paint tool. So not only can you use this to create forests, you can also use it to create grass. And you could also come in here and we'll just select all of these, and there's a built-in erase tool. So anything kind of overlapping with your house, all you have to do is just use this paint tool in order to remove that. So you can see I can remove all of this extra stuff around my house really easy. So I was able to create this whole forest um, with basically a couple clicks. So if you remember that growth tool that we talked about before, well now if you click into your settings and you go to your weather, there's also an option in here for growth. And so you can see how you can actually adjust how uh, built up the trees are inside of your rendering. So you can actually adjust all of these at once to make your forest bigger or smaller. So you can adjust the growth. And I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I think like if I was to select, if I was to drop an individual tree in here, so maybe like, we'll drag this horse chestnut in here. We were to turn growth off, then I believe that if we were to change the growth in our weather settings, like this, that anything with growth turned off would stay as is. So you can use this to set certain trees to a certain growth and then turning this off so the whole thing doesn't adjust. But being able to adjust the growth, the growth of this whole thing lets you really kind of make your forests and other things like that look certain ways depending on uh, what you're going for. So they've also added the ability to adjust grass that you've added in your model. So like these, I scattered with the vegetation scatter tool. Well now if I click in here, click on my grass and go to my settings, you can see there's actually an option in here to make my grass taller or shorter. So you can also adjust how dry that grass looks. So you can see how if I dry it up a bunch, it turns uh, not quite a brown, but more of a yellowish color. If it's not dry at all, then it turns a very bright green color. So you can adjust that as well as adjusting the tint of your grass. So if you wanted like brown grass or something like that, they've now added the ability to do that. So this is much more customizable. And so one of the other things I want to point out again, and I think this has to do with their uh, acquisition of mega scans, is their vegetation library is so much better. Like it's much more detailed now. If you look at all of these different bushes and ferns and other things like that, and you really kind of zoom in on them, you can see how these are really high quality grasses and plants now. So you can adjust the size of those, but those are going to render out really nice. So they've just improved this library a whole bunch. Now I haven't really looked to see if they've improved a lot of the materials or not. So I don't know if a lot of these are new materials or not. Um, they don't necessarily look it, but they might be. I don't necessarily remember all of these being in here. So there might be some new materials out of that Mega Scans library. I'm not 100% sure on that one. 
So in addition, they've also added video materials. So you can now load video files in as materials. So that's something that people have asked me for in the past if this was able to do this. So now you can actually load in those different video files in order to do animated textures. So that's an exciting add, something that I think people have wanted for a while. So in addition, they have an all new animated uh, people library. So you have both posed humans, but also animated humans. So in the ones they have animated, they're much higher quality than the ones that were in there before. So there's different like speaking poses and there's different, uh, different versions of those poses, but these are just much higher, more detailed people models than we had in here before. So, um, so those are definitely in here if you use a bunch of people. So I believe they've also improved their posed people. So you can see how these posed people libraries aren't necessarily, they're, they're not necessarily um, animated, but they're much higher quality than what we had in here before. So you can see how with the textures and everything else, these look really good. So there's also been a few usability fixes that they didn't really talk about in their video, but I really like them. So for example, if you remember back before, what you had to do if you had multiple images or something like that and you wanted to export them, so you had to go through and you would just click on this and they just had the names of the images. Well, they've changed this now so that you actually get a thumbnail preview of the images that you want to export. So now you can find these and export them both at the same time, but you can actually see what's in the thumbnails now as as opposed to you having to just kind of go through different names and other things like that. So that's a welcome change. I think they've also improved the video function a little bit. So you can see how now these different videos are, or these different clips are now in line. So instead of you having it like a video editor and a clip editor, now you just have a video and then the clips are inside of this in line. So they've kind of changed the way this looks a little bit, but I think it's much more usable than it was before. And we'll get more in depth into some of this in a future video, but this is definitely one of those upgrades that while they don't necessarily talk about, I think it makes your life a lot easier. So one last thing I wanted to talk about was the pricing. So if you go to the Unreal Engine page and you click on Get Now, you can see how um, basically what they have in here is there's a free trial that best as I can tell you can use as long as you want for free. I don't know if they stripped down any of the features on that or not. Um, it says no strings attached. So I think there may be just a free version for non-commercial projects um, that's basically labeled as a trial version. I haven't tested that but it's something that's worth checking out. If you do use it for architecture or, um, or pro type features, then it's listed at $499. So right now, if you were to buy that pro, it would be $249, it's 50% off. Um, at least at the moment and it looks like there's free upgrades through December 31st 2021 so the license is perpetual um, however future upgrades I think you would probably have to pay to upgrade I'm not 100% clear on that but it seems like you get whatever is in there now perpetually once you purchase it so it's not like a recurring license thing but then I assume in the future if you wanted to upgrade to new features you would probably have to pay an upgrade fee or something like that there's also a free version version for students and educators as well. So I really think they've worked to make this accessible to people. Um, and honestly, for what you get, this is a really good deal, especially with Twin Motion, uh, considering what Twin Motion used to go for before Epic Games acquired them. So overall, very happy about this new release. But that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought, what you think about the new video, or what you think about the new features. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.